are sick or if they are worried about the uh, virus as far as um, um, an age or if they got some type of, of issues that are worried with their lungs. So we got room to spread out back here. We can probably see another 60, 70, 80 people back here. So, um, so as far as I'm concerned, this is our last Sunday doing two weeks, doing two services. And next week, we'll be back at regular time at 11 o'clock uh, doing that. We're going to wait and start uh, small group ministries with like the children and the kids since the schools are still out. And those, those are still out. We're going to wait till the first Sunday in June and start Sunday schools, Sunday school classes and Wednesday night classes. So, so we'll stay in complete, complete, uh, we'll be in the same order as the schools and everybody else is doing those things. And the, uh, the other churches, some of them are, 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 are doing some now. The most of them, most churches are waiting to the first Sunday in June to do all their small group stuff. So we'll wait to the first Sunday in June, but we'll have church um, starting Wednesday night. We'll start having Wednesday night church. So come, we'll have Wednesday night church service, just like we always do right up here. But no kid classes. All those will start the first Sunday in June. First Sunday in June. So we're still running parallel with the school systems and everything else. So first Sunday in June, all the kids' classes start regular Sunday school. First Sunday in June, everything will be back to normal, with the exception of hugging and kissing and all the other stuff we do. We'll we try to keep that to a minimum if we can. Um, um, and, and try to keep people safe. The one thing that, that bothers us a little bit, and um, we, we prayerfully want to consider everything you know you, one, one sometimes you hear this and the next day you hear don't do that and then this is right and the next day no that's wrong this is right so you don't know um, I think that our people are being ministered to but at the same time um, all I can tell you is what I feel like the Lord's telling me and I think it's time for us to just come back into church and if it bothers folks if, it, if, it, if people can't come they're probably not coming anyway so that's okay and it, it, it is completely okay because there's some people that, that uh, may have some health issues. I talked to Miss uh, Miss um, Vicki Riggins this morning. She's got lung issues. She's had them her whole life. And she made some cakes and brought this morning. Miss Vicki can't, listen, it could be a death sentence to her. So she had to be real careful. She might not be back to church for, for, for 2025. Ain't no telling about Miss Vicki, but she needs to be safe. So uh, we'll have church Wednesday night at seven o'clock in here, just like, just like always without the kids' classes, but all the adult classes will be here. And starting next Sunday, church at 11 o'clock. No Sunday school, but church. The week after, don't forget, Brother Rick Corm will be here that evening on Saturday at, uh, at 7 o'clock. The um, Isaiah 61 will be here playing music. Brother Rick will be preaching at 7, and he'll be here the next morning at 7. So um, look forward to being here with them. And uh, everybody come out and uh, be here with us. Um, the summer camp, 6th through the 10th summer camp, I see it's listed here, it's been canceled. Um, Brother Rick Corum's summer camp with the kids have been canceled. The, uh, there were some issues at the camp. They were going to restrict how many kids could go here and there. And, and Brother Rick and him finally said, well, we got more kids than that coming. So they can't, they can't actually carry on the summer camp with restrictions. You, you listen, you ain't going to restrict kids. If they're going to go, they're going to do what they want to do. So they're not going to have the summer camp for the kids, which is um, which is sad if you ask me. But they're not going to have the, the summer camp. Um, for, for our prayer request today, don't forget uh, Miss Deborah Hendricks, uh, Watson Thompson, uh, Jack is having hip surgery. I'm trying to think of who that is. Remember the Carolyn Drury Lewis family, uh, Miss Myra Thrift, Mr. Bill Giddens, A. W. Woodard, Janice Schumann, Joey Schumann, the Jewel Duberly family. Uh, Teresa Batten, the Glenda Willis family, Wade Howard, Mike Yarn, Lehman Crawford, our president and our country. How's your daddy doing, brother? Done good? Everything went good? Amen. 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 Um, are there any other prayer requests? I know a lot of people are coming for graduation and eat. So if y'all want to stay, y'all stay for graduation and eat. Yeah. It's a different service, not the same one, amen. Be hard to preach a graduation service for y'all, wouldn't it? Yeah. But uh, any other any unspoken prayer request? Amen. Well, let's uh, let's pray for our prayer request this morning, and um, and uh, what we'll do? What how we gonna do? Often you want to just have our have our plates up here if you want to give, or do you want to take a offering? 
just have the, okay. We'll take up offering at the back door if you'd like to give. Uh, please give on the way out. Everything will be back normal next week. I feel completely disjointed with, with two odd services. And it was that way last week. It felt like I was walking with my feet turned backwards all last week. You know, so uh, next week we won't feel that way. And uh, I didn't want Brother Rick to be the first one to preach with everybody back either. So I'm going to do it. Amen. You all right? Amen. Well, let's have, let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for this time together. Lord, we just pray that you'll bless this day. Keep us, keep us all safe, Lord. I, as, we, as we go through this time in America, this time in life, Lord, um, worried about things and seeing some things that we're not certain about, God, I, I don't have any doubt that there's so much that the, that the enemy has placed in front of us, and there's so many things that are, that are happening here, Lord, that are orchestrated by people who are involved with the devil. Um, Lord, I have no doubt that there's things going on around us, Lord, that has nothing to do with the pandemic. And God, yet we live in these times, and um, we just pray, God, that you'll protect us, not only from, from the coronavirus, but the flu and all the other things that go around. Lord, we also pray that you protect us from the evil one. Lord, we realize there is a power that lives in this world, and we just pray, God, you protect us from them. We pray for all the prayer requests that's been mentioned, Lord. You know all of our hearts, God. You know all the prayer requests that we don't even utter out loud, those that are personal and close to us. But, God, those that have been uttered and those over the past week, Lord, hundreds of people have lifted up prayer requests, God, and we just pray that you'll help uh, 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 teach us, Lord, to love people and teach us uh, to be like you in the midst of everything that we do so that when the time comes, when people come to us, Lord, we can pray. And so, God, forgive us of our failures, forgive us of our shortcomings, and we pray for all the prayer requests, spoken and unspoken, God. We pray that you have your will and way. In Jesus' name, amen. Send down from heaven. With a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and all the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we that are alive shall rise and meet him in the clouds. He will be forever. And that's what we're going to do one of these mornings. I'm just going to fly away, see my Jesus face to face. And I won't see my. I look back so much, and the Lord, don't, you know, He comforts me with it. But there's, you never know it, but there's so much you could always have done something better. I want to tell you. Well, so glad when this life is over.
Amen. Take your Bibles this morning and turn to, to the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 43. Luke, chapter 6, verse 43. Luke, chapter 6, verse 43. Talk about bearing fruit. Uh, one thing I've noticed, um, one thing that's been my fear throughout this, I don't know if you want to call it a pandemic, an epidemic, or a, or a, I don't know. One thing that's worried me the most um, about anything and, and, and is, 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 is the lack of fruit that's being bore. The lack of fruit that, that, that you know, if, if you're not careful, anything that the devil has in his arsenal, he'll use to get us to a place where we're not fruitful any longer. Uh, and that's the devil's responsibility. That's what he wants to do. Um, he recognizes, I don't know if you, uh, uh, any of you tuned in this past week, we talked on in the evenings, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, about um, what the Bible has to say about ghosts. And, and please understand that the devil can't, he can't have you. He can't have you. Um, if, you're a, if you're a Christian, you, you can't be uh, possessed by the devil, but, but you can be obsessed by the things that he has to offer. And, and I think that that runs parallel with, with our lives sometimes. We, 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 we want to do the right things, but we kind of like the things of the devil too. We kind of like the things that he has to offer. So when those two lanes start running too close together, if you're not careful, what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to swap paint. You know what I mean? 
you, you, you don't get a little him on you. And, he, and, and chances are you're not going to get much you on the devil. But he's going to get a little on you. Now, talking about bearing fruit, you say, brother, what's that got to do with anything? Well, I'm going to try to draw a parallel here this morning. Uh, over the past several weeks, uh, we, we put in a couple of fruit trees at our house. It was a little late to plant them. Uh, I, that's what I was told. I don't know when's the right time to plant fruit trees or not. I, I, I put it in the ground and hope for the best. I figured if it can grow in a bucket all year, it can grow in the ground. So people say, well, you only got a certain time of year you're supposed to plant trees. I don't know nothing about that. I just know if it can grow in a bucket in your garage, it ought to be able to grow outside in the dirt. Anybody else? Y'all right? I mean, maybe, maybe it works, maybe it don't. It don't have to produce fruit. All, if it'll live, I'm a happy man. It don't have to produce a one pear. I care less about the pears. The best pears is made by Del Monte. They already cut. And then that syrup. Amen? Best pears in the history of the world. You know, I'd take them out, dob a little mayonnaise on them, and throw some cheese on there. You've completely ruined them uh, uh, health-wise, but have some good pears. You know, but uh, it, I've been studying a little bit about fruit Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I had a funeral this past week. A dear friend of mine went home to be with Jesus, uh, Miss Carolyn, and uh, I smile when I talk about her. I've, our whole life I have smiled when I talked about her. Um, she's a who. Uh, she's with the Lord today. But um, one thing I got to... I got to talk with her about a couple of weeks ago. I had told her that we was we had planted some fruit trees. I'd called her one night. She's in the hospital. And I told her that we planted some fruit trees. She said, you put black clack cow in the dirt for you planted them? I said, yep. Yeah. She said, what about leaves? I said, yep. Yeah. I, well, I don't know if we did or not. You know, Yeah, we did put black cow. But I was going, I was going to lie to her because I didn't want her to tell me we'd done it wrong. I scared her but uh, she said, you got to have them things for that thing to grow. So I got looking at plants and different things and done a little study a little bit this past Thursday and Friday. And I wanted to, I wanted to see why things didn't grow. You know, and, and you know what? There's a great parallel there to the Christian life about sometimes how, why Christians don't grow. And, you know, several times in Scripture, God uses farmers or trees that bear fruit or different things. And he likens our lives to those. And I wondered why. And, and you, listen, you're probably going to hear this preached again this year two or three more times because I'm, I'm a, I, I, you know, I pick a subject, you know how I do. I pick a subject and I'll study it and study it. And so I, I'll probably preach on you. I'll probably hit it hard in June. Um, but I'm looking forward to it because I learned things. And, uh, you know, time being limited for me during the day because I, I still have air conditioning business, so time's limited. So when I study, whatever I study, I try to draw that into, into services, into, into, into preaching services. So, uh, Y'all pray for me, and, and let's, uh, let's just make sure we're all on the same page with everything. Luke chapter 6, verse 43. I'm just going to read it. Keep your seat. The Bible says in Luke chapter 6, verse 43, for a, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bringeth forth good fruit. So what is, you know, pretty simple. A good tree is not going to bring forth bad fruit. Bad trees, not going to bring forth good fruit. Uh, for every tree is known by its own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs. So you don't, you don't, you don't reach into a, a, a thorn tree to gather figs. Thorn trees don't produce figs. Nor a, nor a bramble bush to gather grapes. Gra uh, grape vines don't have briars. Any, any like blackberries? Have y'all seen the blackberries out? We run into a stash of blackberries yesterday at our house. Cleaned them out. You wasn't even there, Emma. There's a whole blackberry, little, there's about six bushes. I don't know how they got there. We don't, we don't have briars at Trader's Hill on the hill. It's sandy. I, you'd think there'd be briars. There ain't no briars. But somehow or another, and I bet you I know what happened. Uh, several years ago, I had gotten some uh, uh, berry bushes from a kid I bought at school. We didn't use them. You know, I just really just helping the kid. And I, I, I probably wound up throwing them bushes away, but they're right next to the edge of the woods. And the pot, I seen the pot on the ground, it was deteriorated, just cracked and all busted a little black pot. But berry bushes, what's gonna happen is them things are gonna scatter. And they're gonna keep growing. Amen. Well, yesterday there was just enough, I felt like an old bear pillaging around it like they do at the swamp, you know. I had blackberry uh, uh, juice on my fingers, on my lips, and, and I cleaned them out. Cleaned them out. And you know, blackberries, you know, I grew up eating blackberries. Your mom used to make us go plant them, but we'd go, we'd go pick them out there on, a, on Trail Ridge, on the Folkestone in a Trail Ridge, and you'd pick buckets of blackberries. 
Um, I never knew how much trouble it was to pick the black bears because, you know, I just had to go. It wasn't whether I picked many or not. I, I just had to be out there, you know, when you was a kid, that's what you did. And, and, and man, I'd have black bears all over. I never picked a whole lot. It's, it takes a lot of work to pick a bucket of black bears, especially if you're eating some. You realize after a while, if you're going to pick them, you better not be eating many. Because, it, I mean, it takes, a, it takes a pile of them to make a bucket of berries. So I found, a, and man, I was so excited yesterday. And they were just as sweet. Man, they were sweet. And, and, I, and I, begin to, I begin to think, look here. In the midst of all this, there, there's a hog pen about 50 feet from it. In the midst of all that, in the sun, in a spot that you wouldn't think something would grow, sweet berries. Now, how do you get sweet berries from hogs? From the, from the refuse, I'm trying to be nice about it. From the refuse of hogs, you get sweet berries. And it all, it's all going downhill, you know, from the hog barn, all got berries from it. You know, I can remember growing up, Granny, <clears throat> whenever it was time to, to, to fertilize, somebody come over with a dump truck full of manure, and they'd dump it up in front of the chicken houses, and they'd dump it out in the corner of Granny's yard. Stunk up the whole place. Terrible, looked like a giant, looked like a giant uh, Hershey kiss out there in the edge of the yard. That's a true story. Listen, we'd go over there with a wheelbarrow and shovels hauling that chicken manure all over Granny's garden. Nobody else ever did that? Oh, come on. All right, okay, I see you back. Listen, that's what we did. But let me tell you something. From that grew the best stuff. You put a little shovel, you put a little shovel right there around the bush, keep riding. It, it, was, it was extended release fertilizer. Yeah, extended release. It didn't all happen at once. It's like this little stuff with little pellets that rang good, it's gone. This was extended release stuff. And, uh, and the trouble was if you didn't have enough garden to get rid of all that pile, that's where the trouble began. Then you had to move that. But Granny get a dump truck load every year. I wonder if, I wonder if my mom and daddy remembers that. I'm going to bring that back to mind today. For every tree is known by, the, by its own fruit, verse 44, <clears throat> for of thorns men do not gather figs, nor, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Verse 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth fruit which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. So let me, let me tell you something. One, one thing you got to understand here is, is just because, you know, you think, you think all the time, well, when, you, when I think of fruit, I think of something sweet. When I think of fruit, I think of a nice nectarine or a good orange. Listen, I love an orange. I love a good orange. I, I have mastered the way of eating oranges. I'll sit down and eat a half a dozen oranges at one time. I love oranges. Bananas, love bananas. I can sit down, I can, eat, I can sit eight or ten bananas at one sitting. Anybody else like bananas like that? Man, I love apples. Apple don't stand a chance. Grapes. You know, my wife has ruined me with those grapes that are seedless. We don't even like the ones with seeds in them anymore. Because you can't just eat them. You know, you got to take your time and bust them in half and then bite the seeds out. And it, it, too much work. Too much work. How about, how about watermelon? You know, how many of you buy, how, how many hunt seedless watermelons? Might as well. Listen, if it's either or, get the ones you ain't got to work for. Go and get the ones that don't have seeds in them. Amen. I like seedless watermelon. You know, the ones with the seeds in them are sweeter, if you ask me. I, I don't know if that's true, but it seems like every time I get one with... And listen, if you're smart about it, and you watch how them seeds grow, they kind of grow in a line. You can cut that part out and throw it away. There's a gap in between the seeds. And listen, there's characteristics of it, but they're all sweet. They're all sweet. How many of you ever ate a durian? You ever heard of that? It's a, it's a, it's a fruit that's grown in Southeast Asia. As a matter of fact, it stinks so bad, you can't even carry that fruit in, in, in public transportation. You can't carry it in a bag. The fruit on the outside is like a giant cuckleberry. It's about this big. It's like a football, green. <clears throat> and, and the more brown it turns, they say the better the fruit is. When you open it up, it's got a custard-like sack. The, the, a, a little sack that's filled with like a custard-like uh, uh, stuff that's out with little small seeds that, 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 that burst when you eat it. They said that people that like it, love it. But people that hate it, hate it. There's no middle ground. 
and when you open it, it stinks up the whole place. Everything changes when you open a durian, but, but, but it stinks to high heaven. What, what I'm trying to say to you is there's more fruit than just good fruit. There's more fruit in this world than just good fruit. There is fruit out there that, do, that doesn't taste good, that, that, that isn't sweet, that didn't, that didn't have, a, have a nice... I love the smell of watermelon. Man, I love the smell of, a, the smell of grapes. Right now outside our barn, our, uh, our trees are growing. And what's, what kind of trees are growing in front of the barn? Mama calls them something. Those are called uh, <clears throat> have a white flower, a green bush. They're the best smelling flower. Every time I walk by, I go in my shop. One's growing, <clears throat> and it's grown out. It's grown so big that it's leaned over in front of the door. But I don't want to cut it because of the flowers it's on. So <clears throat> every time I go by the barn, I have to lean in and open the door. I smell them, them flowers. Ah, oh, I forget what, it's, what it is. You ask Miss Hughes, she'll tell you. She knows all about flowers. But man, I, listen, I love the smell of it. I mean, it makes everything better. You walk inside, it smells good. But listen, uh, there's some fruit that I probably wouldn't want the smell of. But I'm going to tell you, there's more fruit than just that that's sweet. And not only is that a good parallel in the world and in things uh, in a garden, but it's the same way in life. Listen, just because, just because as we walk around today and our goal is to bear fruit, there are times in your life where you don't bear good fruit, you bear bad fruit. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. Let me, let me, let me look, look what I got wrote down here. Um, not all trees bear sweet fruit, but it bears fruit nonetheless. Uh, I, I looked up some reasons why. We've got, we've got these two pear trees that we put in the ground. Once Carol Ann told me I had to have the the, the black cow for we put them things in the ground and after about you know listen I, uh, I, I worked at White Oak the first 10 years of my life I know when you plant something new it's got to be watered every day three times a day if you will but it needs water every day the root ends are exposed you've broken them up it's, it's, it's it needs every end of every every root's trying to pull in moisture and water that didn't happen we put them in watered them good Maybe water them the next day, missed a day. Water them a day, missed two days. Water them after it missed four days. So after they've been in the ground about two, three weeks, all the leaves are dying. All the leaves are dying. So Miss Sherry said, I don't know what's happening to that trail. I said, I ain't getting enough water. I said, she don't like when I think I know what I'm talking about. I thought, I thought it was a hitch in all the plants. I said, I don't think it's getting enough water. She said, you don't know. I said, you're probably right. So I looked up. I looked up when I was studying this about what what are, what are some care. Why does it? Why does a plant not grow? You know, I think about Christians as a, as a pastor of the church. I look out in our in our congregation sometimes, and I wonder about the fruit that you're bearing. And I want to know. It, it bothers me when people don't bear fruit. I, I wonder what's going on. We've got trees in our yard that that sometimes a, a little bug gets on those uh, crepe myrtle trees. They'll get little bugs on the bottom of the leaves and they'll put black tar looking substance all over those leaves. Man, that worried me to no end. And then they would, they, the season would change and the leaves would fall out. They'd come back and it'd be clean. But sure as a world, wasn't long, bugs would grow right back on that tree and turn the leaves black again. Done a little study. You know I can spray that thing with Dawn dishwashing detergent? That'd straighten that right out. You know I did that? He had more bugs. Matter of fact, I don't even have to spray it anymore. Whatever happened killed it, and now everything seems to be good. You know, in the, in the life of the church, I, you know, sometimes, not just me, but other people see the lives of people that attend that group, and, and, and they wonder, they wonder about the fruit. They wonder what's going on in a person's life. And listen, we ought to worry about one another, you okay? We ought to worry about one another. <clears throat> it, it, ought to, it, ought to, it ought to worry us. When one of our brothers and sisters comes in church, they don't have much to say. It seems like their demeanor's sad. It seems like nothing, nothing is happy anymore. It, it, it ought to bother us. It ought to bother us to prayer. Uh, it, it, ought to, it ought to make us want to look out and see what's wrong. Let me talk to you about five quick things right here. Five quick things. I'm almost, I'm good right here. I, I, for, for a plant, though, when you look at a plant, five quick things that will cause a plant not to grow. Five quick things. Pollination problem. Pollination problem. They say one of, one of the greatest issues about, about a, a plant is, is pollination. Bees and other pollinators are reluctant to go out in foul weather. So if you have a time, if you have a real wet spring or if you have a windy spring, a lot of pollinators don't want to go out in that type of weather. That'll cause you to that'll cause you to, to, to miss some fruit that year. They don't like to go out when it's windy or rainy or cold. 
So a lack of insect activity limits its growth. That's a, that's a pollinator problem. I'm going to tell you, too, it's the same for the church. Same for the church. When, we're at, when, we're, when we are inactive, we don't produce fruit. We grow stagnant, lazy, uncaring, lack joy, have no peace. We, we get short-tempered, just, just like that old, just like that, that, that apple tree or that pear tree. Uh, I got, a, I got a, a peach tree at the edge of my yard for about, man, them things have been there, I'm trying to think how long. I bet they've been there, I bet they've been there seven, eight years. Them things about that high. They about that high when I put them in there. Ain't done nothing. Can I tell you what I've done to it? Nothing. Said me and put it in there and said, do your best. Just walked away from it. See, I didn't want them there to begin with. Me should did. They in a bad spot if you ask me. Because that's where I like to turn around. That's where I like to park. And me should wanted an orchard right by the barn. We don't need an orchard by the barn. So I was going to prove a point. I didn't do a thing to it. If her trees, let her plant them. Let her water them. Amen. And things ain't done a thing. So, luckily, my daddy ran over, it was four of them. Luckily, daddy ran over one. I broke it off, killed it dead as a hammer. Listen, killed it dead as a hammer. You know what happened? You know what happened? About two or three months later, a little stem come up. Right out of the midst of that, where that other one run over. I thought, well, pray. I'd done been parking over the top of it. It grew right at the. It grew right at the bottom. Right now, there's about six peaches on it. I ain't never seen a peach on my. The one beside it, when he ran over that up, I said, "Well, I'm just gonna tear that one up and get it up too." Like a little burn around it with with a, with a pine bark. So, so I, I took the edge of that uh, black, um, uh, deck and, and pushed up there against it, and just tried to flatten the whole thing out. The whole thing laid over, see it roots, and everything. I said, I'll come back and pull you up, old boy. Listen, it was a mess. So I went out to the barn and finished mowing, come back, shoes are putting that thing back in the ground, it just flop over. Nine peaches on it today. The craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, what, what, what happened to it? What was the difference? Attention. Attention. Hey, a thing got a little attention. That, that bush got a little bit of attention from somebody that cared for it. I didn't care nothing for it. Miss Shug did. She knows that one that was broke whenever we started paying. Started putting a little miracle grow. That'd be a good thing. To, that'd be, we could build a sermon called Miracle Grow. That'd be good, wouldn't it? But listen, she started paying a little attention to it. Now, there's two more back there in the back I'm going to get them. They ain't coming back. I've learned my lesson. You got to get them boys out of there. They got to be gone. But listen, there's two right there. It's got peaches on it. And then we're, we're breathlessly awaiting our incoming peach crop. It's parked right there in front of everything. But you have to have good activity. In a church today, listen, if you want folks to grow, there's got to be some good activity. There's got to be some things happening around a church house that people can be involved in. When you get hung up just doing Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night church, People will get bored with it. I hate to tell you, but folks will get bored with just coming to church, doing the same old thing, singing the same three songs, hearing the same four sermons. What you need is something different every now and then. Hey, you need to have a scene. You can throw a revival in there. Throw VBS. Listen, get up there and have all the kids come up and sing sometime. Have all the men come up. Listen, whatever you throw in a mission project and you work out here in the community and you, you feed your community out here a couple of Saturdays in a row, what it does is it, all, it, it, it literally, Brother Justin, pollinates the Christians that are in there and they'll begin to grow. A little bit of activity, man. A little bit, a little bit of activity, you start seeing fruit in your life. Listen, as pastor, listen, listen, as pastor, I, that's exactly what I want to see. Just a little bit of pollinating. A little bit of work. Things start growing. It don't take a lot. People think that, people think that, you know, I look back over the years and, and the Lord's allowed us to be in places that have grown. Hickox grew and Kent Pinkney grew and here we are here. And, and listen, I don't think there's no magic. I don't think there's no magic pill. And I don't ever remember getting some book that said, listen, if you'll do this, this will happen. I never, never got that book. Hey, you know what I believe? I believe in listening to the Holy Spirit of God. Hey, I believe in coming and preaching the book week in and week out. And people that fall in love with the book will bear good fruit and that fruit will last them. Whatever. Listen, if you, get you, if you start getting a crowd here by a weenie roast, 
You start getting a crowd here because you got upward soccer, which I don't have a problem with. But if you start making people come here to play on your softball team, you got a problem. Y'all all right? You'll be okay now. You get folks here because they want to hear the word. Hey, you'll grow some fruit from that, brother. You, you listen, you get folks here that ain't ashamed to go out and tell somebody about Jesus because they've heard the word in church. And, and listen, they're not ashamed of their testimony. They're not ashamed to go out and testify. They're not ashamed to go out and say, listen, I'm a child of the king. When they're not ashamed to do that, man, you'll see fruit. Place to grow. Why? Because it's pollinated. Listen, there's some activity going on around the place. Secondly, soil conditions. I had no idea. Yeah, I did. Listen, growing up, you, you had to have good soil. I can remember, I can remember uh, every year we had to have lime brought out to the house. You know, we, didn't, we didn't buy stuff in bags. Growing up, it come out in truckloads. We live, we, we live Traders Hill, Georgia. It, it's close to the St. Mary's River, and if you know anything about that, that means our soil is almost bleached out. It's sand. You dig down, you dig down about two foot where I live, and it's beach sand. People tried to buy our hill at Traders Hill. For, they said we could have it back when they got done. They wanted to dig it out for the sand to use it in building projects. And everything. Been, Daddy was offered money way back in the 70s, and, and when, when they, they gave it to us, we was offered money back in the 90s. And, and listen, it won't be no good to me. I, don't, I can't live on a pond. I need, I need some dirt to live on. But that, that, that dirt is literally bleached. You have to have nutrients to put in it. There's some things you got to listen. I, and some things you won't grow, it don't matter what you do. But there's some things, you can give it just a little bit of attention, man, they'll grow crazy. I can grow tomatoes. I don't know what it is. We can grow tomatoes on the hill. Can't grow corn. I've tried every way you know how. But, 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 but for whatever reason, the water comes down, and, and, and it's kind of sloped a little bit. So, so the water and everything just literally runs everything down. The creek is green. Everything runs to the creek at our house. But up on the hill, we have a hard time. Soil conditions. Be careful. Listen to this. It, it, talking about insects and, and real flowers, what we're talking about here is how pests, the things that keep something from growing in your yard, be careful of quick-release fertilizers. How about this? It can give you a tall, nice-looking bush at the expense of flowers and fruit. Take that, take that into thinking there. You, you think about that quick-release fertilizer. See, that's what I'm after. I just want it green. I don't care if it's ryegrass. I just want it green. Some people like the little big thick, but I don't care. Matter of fact, I wish my grass wouldn't grow a, a lick. I told my mama when I was little, my, my goal was to have enough money when I got older to have a concrete yard with AstroTurf where I'd never have to mow again. I hated mowing grass. I don't like it now. Uh, 51 years on this earth, I don't like grass. I, listen, I had to cut grass when I was little. That, I, it, you didn't have options or choices. I didn't like cutting grass in. I don't care about cutting it now. And, 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 but, but, but listen, Whenever you think about um, something being pretty, you, you, can take some, you can take some fertilizer and put on that bush. Now, I bet you those two pear trees that we put in there where the leaves are dead and drying on it, we put some fertilizer, they call quick release. Immediately it breaks down, poof, hit them roots. Those roots pull it up, and in just a few days, those, limb, those leaves will be turning green again, and it'll look nice and pretty. But what happens is, is it, it, it's just one push. It's a quick push, and what happens is, is it... it, it all the tree's nutrients, it pushes just to grow good leaves, not good fruit. It, it, it pushes just to, make a, just to make a nice tall bush, not a strong bush. And, and nice pretty leaves, but, but it, won't, it won't grow the fruit that you need. You see, there's churches that way, there's, there's Christians that way. Look great on the outside, but ain't growing no fruit on the inside. Hey, there's, there's folks today that are, that are in God's Word just enough to teach a Sunday school class, but not enough to grow any fruit in their life. Hey, listen, there's folks today getting ready for church that are, that are getting ready to preach the gospel that preach just enough to draw a big crowd of people that have the same spiritual depth as they have because what they do is they preach just enough to draw a crowd that will shoot up and get green leaves, but there will never be any fruit. Never be any fruit. Listen, you need fruit in your life. You need good soil. Listen, whenever you start this, whenever you start this campaign towards being a Christian, you know, people say, well, brother, when I got saved, I was brought into the family of God. I'm a Christian. You're right. But there's also a process now that you're involved in, a sanctification process. When you got saved, it wasn't over. Now there's some growth that needs to take place. 
Listen, there, there's people right now today that have never grown any since the day they were saved because they got, they, listen, they hadn't cooperated with the process of what God's trying to do in their life to make them more like Him. Listen, God's, God's in the business of making us like His Son, Jesus. And our goal ought to be to cooperate what God's doing in our lives. And when we do that, listen, it, it'll grow good fruit. Listen, I don't, I don't need, I don't need the, 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 all the, you know, the fancy stuff at church, all the trappings, I guess, that you'd say. I, I want to know, I want to be around folks that are going to teach God's Word. Listen, as a pastor, I still need to be around teachers that are teaching God's Word because it teaches me. I want to be around godly people that want to lead their stuff and, and do their things. Listen, when somebody comes in to play music, that's why me and Brother Leon get along. Me and Brother Benji. Listen, their heart's in it, man. It, it teaches me. It feeds me. And it's not just that, that quick, that quick that makes me happy today, but tomorrow I'm down. No, listen, I can take something away from God's house that's going to grow me, that I can keep all week, that I can take a little piece of it with me. Uh, Monday, and I can chew on it a little bit at work. And, and Wednesday night, I can pick up another little mouthful, and I can go and I can chew on it then. You see, I don't need, I don't need to just hit the top and everything's great and everything's fine, and let's just shout real loud and sing real loud, and woohoo, then when it's over with, fight and holler at the kids all the way home. I, I don't want that. Listen, I want to change life. And, 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 and as, 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 as the leader, I want to make sure that everybody else's life is changing too. You, you might not think this, but it's not hard to tell if you're not bearing fruit, if your soul isn't good. Be careful about entertainment. Same for the church. Don't care. Be careful about entertainment. Folks will shout loud when they're here, but have little depth because we're afraid to teach. How about the third thing? Pest attacks. You ever have bugs attack stuff? I, I remember growing up. Anybody ever picked the back of growing up? Listen, I had a co-op with my cousins. I was in charge of the whole crowd. I'd hired us out to different people. And we, we, they usually pay 16 bucks a day. I had, I had got us $20 each per day. Yeah. And, and, and I, I paid them. I was the youngest when I paid the other three cousins. You know, I, it took me, if I'd have been smart, I'd have hired one more cousin and paid them 16 like everybody else got. I wouldn't have had to work at all. They'd have beat me up for that. That wouldn't work. But I can remember going out into the backer fields and uh, we, had a, we, had a, we had a bug we had to get off. Anybody remember what they were? In the backer worm. You ever throw them at people? Uh, you ever cut him in half and stick him inside out and fish with him? Oh yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's a good, that's a good fish bait right there. You okay? How many of y'all gonna eat lunch now? Uh, but, but listen, when you think about that, there, there, there's pests that, 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 that take on that plant. There was, the, there was these worms, and you had to, you had to get them. You flip the leaves up and down, and, and, you, and you, everyone you saw, you stepped on. And there was a sucker. You had a top and sucker. There's a little top like a flower. And you didn't want any of the, any of the, uh, uh, the, the good um, um, sustenance to go to flowers. You wanted it to go to leaves, to make big leaves. If that, if that thing was trying to grow big flowers off the top, it wouldn't put nothing to the leaves. So you had to go around and break all the tops. Then you had to pull all the little suckers. And what those were, you had one main stem come up. Then you had these little small stems that would break off to the side. And it would try to grow leaves. You'd break all those off. You wanted just the sustenance to go to just those tobacco leaves. Three good pickings, you wanted three or four good leaves on the bottom, three or four good leaves in the middle, three or four good leaves on the top. That was a good plant. And I remember as kids, it was our job to keep the pests off of the trees. A good, a good correlation with that today in church is we have a responsibility to keep the pests out in church. Listen, same church, biodiversity, uh, pets can, can deter uh, uh, unwanted ones. Let me, let me, let me see, see. Cultivate a garden where good bugs thrive. They will keep a check on the bad bugs in a garden situation. You, you know, they, they say ladybugs are good. You ever heard that ladybugs are good in a garden? I don't like ladybugs. I don't like any kind of bug, quite honestly. I don't want it on me. I don't like spiders. They say some spiders are good spiders, some are bad spiders. They're all spiders, amen? I don't want any of them. That's why I have man's prayer every month. But they say there's good bugs and bad bugs. And what you do is you get enough good bugs, and they'll offset what the bad bugs are doing. You know, in a church setting. What we need to do is we got to have enough Christians, enough good ones, to offset what the bad ones try to do. Can I tell you the truth? There'll be people that come into your congregation that ain't really interested in getting fruit or growing fruit or being engaged in what the king has to say. They have very little interest. They like going to the next place, like being wooed by, the, by, by, by everybody that's there. Maybe, they, maybe they're a longtime member. 
That'd be a long time person. It seems like every time something turns around, that, that, that they like to, that they'll hurt somebody. What you need is, is some good pests in there that are just love on them. I remember one time I was at a church, and there was this lady. I love her. Lord, I love her. And she was different at church than she was at, at, at home. It's the craziest thing. But listen, at church, man, she'd, she, she'd tan our hides about and just be, and, and be rude to people. She sat right in the back. When guests come in, she was the first face they saw, and it was sour. Sour face. Listen, I, I can remember, and, and, I, and I remember, I remember one day, I was cooking in the, uh, in the, in the social hall. Uh, it was a men's breakfast cooking. She come in there, and man, she, listen, she got on me about something. And I, re I leaned over, and she, listen, she wasn't 70 pounds. I leaned over, grabbed her, and kissed her around, talking for me. She basically said, oh. I said, now there. Now you'll be sweet the rest of the day. But that didn't go very good. Everybody in the kitchen thought that was fun. You know what you need every now and then? You need a good pest. You need, you need to offset the things that are going on in the church. See, there's some folks that there's some folks that are that are in your church that ain't really worried about the bad, the good things that are happening. What you need are some folks that do care. You need some folks that are worried about individual people. You need some folks that are worried about why sister so-and-so hadn't been to church in a month. I, I tr trust me, I, I can't see everybody. So you need individual folks that say, well, you know, I go to Sunday school with sister so-and-so. I need to check on her. You need good pests. Listen, you're going to be a pest to some folk. Some folk don't want to be called and checked out. Bother them anyway. Well, listen, what we ought to do is make a solemn vow to everybody that joins our church and everybody that comes into our fellowship. Now, listen, when times get tough and we don't see you, we're going to call you. Listen, if something happens, you ain't here, here's what's going to happen. Because even everybody, everybody first comes, they're like, oh, that's a good idea. And, until they get on hard times. Or, or they start getting back in the world. Or they start getting back to those things they used to. And then they just think they can just disappear. Well, what, what if about 40 of us showed up at your house twice a week till you come back? Sat down and eat with you. Well, that'd be a pest, wouldn't it? You know, we need some good pests. We need, we need those that care about other folks. In, in a church set, we need those that care about other folks. Fourthly, pruning errors. When a branch needs pruning, there's a right way to do it. Is that true or not? See, I was trying to trim that. I was, I was trying to prune that <coughs> peach tree in our yard. Did it wrong. I should have pulled it all the way up. Man, it was ugly. I'd run over the top of the lawnmower. Wow. And, and I thought I had it. Man, that thing's growing pretty today. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. When a branch needs pruning, there's a right way to do it. Once it's pruned, you got to protect the spot where it's laid bare. There's going to come time in churches where some pruning needs to take place. Now, I'm not talking about if people running folks off. Listen, there are times whenever you preach things or you say things that is, that, uh, that is, that is correction or even perfection, things that help people, but it still hurts. There are times when people need to make changes in their lives, and not just folk, but me too. There are times when we as, we as adults have to recognize that we haven't attained a godliness, that we're not perfect, that, that there's some things in our lives that might could change, and there's a right way to do it. Listen, and, and, when, and when the right way, well, sadly, most people think that they know the right way to tell folk, and that, listen, they'll just go ahead and do it. I had one, one, one person tell me one time in church, uh, they hurt somebody's feelings, and I had to go to them and say, "Listen, you, you know you hurt so and so, and that's a shame. You, you, you now you have to go apologize to them according to scripture. You need to go back and apologize. I ain't doing that. You need to. I'm not. Well, the only option we have is to set you outside this fellowship. What? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you don't stand and apologize publicly to that lady, we won't ask you to leave this church." He didn't come back about three weeks. His wife, his wife came. Chewed me out. I said, man, as far as I'm concerned, you can go with him. I love you, but you hurt people. You can't, you can't, you can't say things like that to people. You can't act like that toward folks when they come down to God's house. Y'all okay? Listen, three weeks later on a Sunday night, he came back. Stood up there in the road, yeah, there in the bench. The people who offended him was here, was there. He stood up weeping. He said, I want to apologize. He said, I want to apologize. 
He said, everything happened just like it was supposed to. He said, I was wrong. Our pastor came to me and told me. He said, he did it the right way in love. He said, I was, I, he said, I was never coming back here again. He said, God quit me. He turned to apologize to that lady. You know what we did after that? We loved on him. And we put him in why we just loved on him. Today, if they, if they need something, I, I've, been, I've been gone from there 12 years. You know who they call? Brother Ray. Listen, we, we, was, we, was in a, we was in a tight spot where some pruning took, took place. And then we were there for the healing process as well. And when it was all said and done, they bore great fruit. And as far as I know, still are. You got to be careful how you prune. You got to be careful how you prune. Lastly, this and I had to study. Biennial. Is that saying, am, I, am I saying that right? Biennial? Bi, not biannual. It is spelled by E N N I A. Biennial. Uh, biennial. Would you say it real fast? Biennial. Berry. Biennial bearing. Fruit trees do real well one year, then not so well for a year or two. What's that about? What's that about? That's just like in a Christian's life. You know, you, you think about your biennial bearing. You know what happens? Is once we get some good fruit out of it, we think we've got her licked. Listen, once we really, once we fertilize and take care of it, we get a good year of growth, we think, woohoo, I got this thing figured out. And then and if you ain't careful, you'll let that thing stand on its own. You think that you've done everything you need to do to get that thing to the spot where you got it figured out. And that thing won't grow the next year. You look back, well, I didn't put as much attention in it this year as I did last year. I got an uncle up in Alabama. He, he lived, everything in North Alabama is on hills. And his house is up on a hill. He has to put his emergency brake on his car when he parks it. And, it, and he's got fruit trees. He's got peach trees, grapevines. And, and listen. For several years, I remember me and Miss Cheryl, we, we first got married, several years, y'all don't want to say how many, 27 or 8, something like that. He had, we had great vines and they were a mess. And he had little tariffs. You know what tariffs are? It's kind of like little decks that grow up in a smaller, it gets flat spot, it goes up here another flat spot, it goes up here another flat spot. He had them great vines on a tariff. They didn't grow for it. Weeds in them. A few years later, we come back, he took all the weeds out. A few years later, he'd done a little more. When it this past past year, here's what he's done. He's had time. And what he's done is he's cleaned all around all them grapevines. Man, they put out a tractor trailer load full of grapes. But he has figured out what, he said, man, it takes time and attention. He said, every single year I got to do the same exact things to get the same, to get the same results. He said, I can't, I can't, I can't back off. Whatever I had last year, I do this year. He's got netting, netting. Covering grapevines that are from here to that highway out there along. Several netting that he has to take off to pick the grapes. He don't want the birds to get them. He goes out there and builds fires up under his peach trees during the wintertime. And keeps them lit all night to keep from them burning up and dying. Freezing and dying. That's work, isn't it? You know, people, say, people say, well, I wonder why Christians grow one year and then not the next. I wonder why, I wonder why you see fruit in somebody's life now and, and, and not later. Well, that's easy. Because you ain't put the same amount of work in it. You're not putting the same kind of tension in it. Listen, as a, as a, as a child of the king, you've got to be consistent about the work that you put in to bearing fruit. Listen, it can't, it can't be just a little here. Listen, you can't miss two or three months worth of church and expect to bear fruit and God to be happy with how you live in your life. Listen, you're going to feel guilty about things and your heart's going to be broke about things because you're not doing what God called you to do. You're not, you're not taking care of business like you know you're supposed to do it. And then before you know it, you're angry at somebody at church and then any little old thing will wash you out of the boat. Somebody hurt your feelings because they parked in your spot. Listen, people get all out of whack about things that don't even matter. Listen, when you was hitting on all eight cylinders and bearing fruit, that didn't bother you in the least. That didn't bother you in the least, man. You were just glad down there at God's house. You were just excited to be down there with those other believers, being part of the kingdom of heaven, waiting on Jesus to come back. But all of a sudden, now things bother you. The singing ain't no good. 
That preacher preaches on that mess. I mean, you, you can almost see it on people's visage. It just changes. You can just see it on people. It's going to be a biennial season for some. They're not going to bear fruit this year. Why? Because they ain't put no work in. I got news for you. You don't bear fruit by accident. You, you, listen, you don't bear fruit just by happenstance. <clears throat> you know when them blackberry bushes started growing at our house? You're going to like this. It's going to be good for you. Them blackberry bushes have been in the ground out there. As a matter of fact, they've been thrown away out there. Give me a minute. Let's see. Since 2003, 17 years ago, they got thrown away. Out there, no, out there at the edge of the bushes. On a slope to you, just a little bit of slope. Not much, just a little bit of slope. 17 years ago. What's the difference? That hog barn. That hog barn. They get a little fertilizer. They get a little nutrients. Boy, they grow some sweet fruit. You know, our own lives, that's what needs to happen. You know, I think sometimes we forget that you need to go to church when you don't want to. That you need to go to Sunday school when you don't feel like it. Listen, that you need to stop and pray for people when God tells you to. That you need to engage yourself in God's Word day in and day out. Listen, that's when you bear fruit. And I'm going to tell you something else. It's going to take more work next year to bear fruit than it did this year. It's going to take a little more work. Why? Because this is where you are now. And, and listen, as your tree grows, it's going to take more sustenance. It's going to take more. It's going to take a little more and a little more to keep up. And when the tree was a little small, you take just a little bit, sprinkle around it. But when that thing grew into it, you know, my, my mother has fig trees. She's got pomegranate trees, orange trees. And, you know, after a while, when those things were little, she did that. some of those trees have probably been there 50, 60 years. There, there's, a, there's a fig tree there that's about at the base where the, where the leaves touch. I would guesstimate 50 feet wide. You can walk inside that fig tree, inside of it, in the shade and pick fruit and just sit in there. Pick fruit and I don't like feed. You can do it if you like feed. But the fertilizer it takes to keep that tree up is more than what it used to take. Because it's bigger. It needs more. Listen, as you grow in Christ, as you grow in Christ, you're going to need more and more of God and less and less of the world. You're going to need more and more of the things of God to make you happy. Because what you got last year, hey, you, you, you need a little more. Or a little, little something a little different. You know, it's going to take, take a little more. As, as our church grows, some of you are going to need to go on conferences. You may not have been on a conference in years. Some of you are going to need to go on a conference. You know, where you go to hear some preaching and some singing. And you listen, you'll bear fruit off of that for a whole year thinking about, boy, that was a good time. And then before you know it, boom, time to go again. Boy, you love it again. You grow, you bear fruit all year long. These kids, they canceled their summer camp. Brother Rick, you know, they, they can't have the summer camp because of the camp down in Florida. So you know what we got to do? We got to hustle. We got to find something for our kids to do. They can't sit around stagnant and be by any and not bear fruit. We're going to find some mission work. We're going to find something. You just going to take them all to Disney World? Nope. Mm. We want to do things that grow them. We want to be involved in things they look back and go, that was good. And that, that, that hit me in the fields. Yeah. We drove all the way to Mississippi one time for a little old lady. Redone her yard, planted flowers. Spent three days planting flowers in her yard. I was a hiccup. Those kids still call me. I run into a kid the other day in, uh, in, in Brunswick. He said, you remember that time we went to that lady's house in Bay St. Louis? I said, yeah. He said, best time ever. We planted about $100 worth of flowers. Eat up $2,000 worth of food. But they still remember it. Why? Because they were giving. They were helping. And they were doing. Listen, as we go, what's it going to take for you to bear fruit? What's it going to take for you to bear fruit? What, what, what do you need to do for it? Listen, you know. Let's pray together.
Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, for all your goodness. Lord, you love us and we know that. God, thank you for the idea and the thought that we can grow closer to you every day if we want to. You tell us we have not because we ask not. Lord, our desire is to be close. Our, our desire is to bear fruit. Our desire is to help others bear fruit. So, Lord, this morning as we get ready to go, help us, Lord, to remember not to be weary in well-doing, not to be slack concerning your word and, and not to forsake the assembling ourselves together. Lord, help us to be like you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss from right here. It's 10 o'clock. Don't forget, next week, 11 o'clock, we all come in in one service. And we can spread out if you want to, uh, fit set family groups if you want to. But we're going to be in one church service next week. Amen? Okay. Amen. God bless you. Man, I hate you having pains. <laughs>